What's up guys, it's your boy The Bad Wolf. I want to thank you for checking in. This is a Bad Wolf Entertainment exclusive. No, I'm just kidding. It's not really an exclusive. Everything here is education and entertainment purposes only. Make sure you always vet your information and if you be ever so kind, please re 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 rewind. All right. No, there's actually nothing to rewind anymore, right? Right. Okay. So, you guys have been asking for the Bad Wolf merchandise. Bam! Oh yeah! And for those who haven't seen yet, check me out, y'all. The Funk Soul Brother. All right. Where can you get these things? There should be a little uh, clip down below with the merchandise scrolling by. If not, then uh, there might be a link that pops up at the end. Otherwise, go to blacksite32.com and you can get yours. Whoop, whoop. Looking so clean, but yet so so shiny, yet so grimy. Ugh. All right, so um, this particular video, we are going to be talking about Right to Travel. Now, if you've watched the other videos, you know that Right to Travel is not for everybody. There is a lot of officers who do not know anything about constitutional law, which usurps uh, state law. Okay, Under constitutional law, you have the right to travel in your private conveyance, but it must all be done properly. Still yet, that does not mean that there aren't some bad officers out there, bad seeds. There already are. There always have been. Okay, The days of the good old Andy Griffith cop, everybody being like him, in Mayberry is over. Okay, Until the AI turns, uh, turns on and does all that stuff, we're still going to have to deal with human feelings and whatever else. Now, this does not mean that there aren't some good cops. You'll find that a majority of the cops during the day are actually really good cops. They've been around for a long time. They've either been sued or they heard about this. So they know what it is. And so for all the cops out there, and I know you guys do watch, I've been approached by many of you guys, and I have helped all of them who've come to me to change their status, to understand what's going on. A lot of the information, all you have to do is literally either go to my, my site, blacksite32.com, and look at some of the free files, um, get the right to travel stuff, you can talk to your commanding officer. Ask him. Don't be such a, oh, I know it all. That's that sovereign citizen. See, there's no, that's what your commanding officer, some of them have told you. Command, the sovereign, so what you're calling a sovereign citizen, okay, is actually a person who has not fully done the process of removing their vehicle and themselves from the public side to the private side. But there is no true definition of a sovereign citizen because they don't exist. Sovereign is to be a king, and citizen is to be of the city ship or the citizen state. You can't be a king and a slave at the same time. Okay? So, but I get what they're doing. All right? So here's what you need to do for those officers out there. You go and talk to your either your commanding officer. If you don't get anything from them, you talk to your chief of police. Tell them you want to talk to them in the private. Ask them, is there such a thing as right to travel? Ask them, is there really such a thing as constitutional law? Ask them, did all the states not give up some of their sovereignty to be under the Constitution? Okay, That's why the older officers who've been around know about this and go, yeah, I don't want anything to do with that. So that doesn't mean you shouldn't still be out there doing your job for people who are not doing it right. But understand this, you do not have the lawful capacity to pull over somebody who's private. Even in your books, it says, U.S. citizens, your jurisdiction. Foreign nationals, unless they're doing criminal activity, you can't bother. Okay? If they are, then by all means, pull them over because public safety trumps all statuses. But understand this. Somebody who's properly doing right to travel can sue you. The moment they tell you they're in, uh, they are a foreign national and they're operating privately, they are protected by the Constitution. Look it up. Okay? So unless they're doing damage to somebody, personal property, depriving somebody of their rights, um, or have not completed the right to travel process properly, okay, then you have the ability to make sure that the, uh, the safety is being um, the safety of the public is being provided. Uh, otherwise, we have the right to travel privately. So if you haven't you guys haven't seen those videos go check out my other videos on right to travel so to finish this part up on the right to travel series unless something else comes out the short version of it is this your vehicle should be paid off so that the state doesn't still have your um, your title okay 
Should be, all right? Do people do it? Yeah, but it really should be paid off, all right? Because now the vehicle's 100% yours, all right? Nobody's holding the title, you have the title, which gives you full control over the vehicle, all right? Though, legally, possession, physical possession of a material object is nine-tenths of the law, which means you have full rights to it, all right? Next, you would get rid of your driver's license by the uh, driver's license surrender form. Okay, they might call it something different in every different state. If you want the full breakdown, uh, go, uh, YouTube search. Okay, somebody's dropping off something. Let's see here. And we're back. All right. So, all right. So, you also have to remove your vehicle by use of the uh, vehicle cancellation form, all right? Now, in some areas, it might be a little bit different. Remember, all this is education and entertainment, so vet the information with your particular area, and don't do anything just because somebody told you to do it or that you can. Double check all the information, make sure it's right for you. All right, so, once you, here, let's just put this up. All right, so you've got those two things done. You've given them back the plates, the driver's license. Okay, you're out of the system. All right, it does not hurt to send up or follow up with a letter to the, uh, letting the chief of police know, putting it on record at the county, sending it to the attorney general for your state. And in that letter, you would also have in there that you want to also be removed from the national driver's registry, okay, along with any of their records that they have at the headquarters for the DMV. Now, once you've done this, and in some places you might have to um, inform them that you're moving, and here's why, is because this is not a normal thing for most people, okay, since the system was put into place, everybody's been using it, but there are thousands upon thousands of people who operate uh, their conveyances privately, all right? There's no law that requires you to register any of your property with the state of whatever, okay? There's, there's no law. They have statutes, rules, regulations for people who are registered, businesses who are registered, okay? But not a natural private person, which is what you are as a national of the United States if you elect to use that side of your citizenships, okay? So this doesn't mean you have to do it, and let's be honest. You know, have some officers pull people over and ticketed and towed them? Sure. Okay, there are ways to take care of that. However, that is a possibility because not everybody out there knows all of this. Remember, less than 1% of people out there know anything about constitutional law. So, on the private side, you've got constitutional law, okay, and your natural rights endowed to you. And then on the other side, you've got your public side which are usually going to be your state, local statutes, rules, and regulations as somebody belonging to that corporation, all right? So remember, your name in all capitalized letters is a uh, public transmitting utility, also known as your straw man, okay? Which is what was issued from the state, which brought you into their jurisdiction, along with the use of the zip code to be a federalized state employee. And there's nothing wrong with that, all right? So it's just for some people who are private, now, usually this is stuff that more so elite people use, um, operating in the private, um, entertaining the natural rights under the Constitution for the United States of America. So, if you've done that aspect, okay, like I said, the other video is going deeper into detail. This is kind of a general overview. overview. So, you would want to get the last part of this, which is also very crucial, because some states will either resist, may even refuse um, to remove or delete all of your information, and then it can be used against you later on, which is why we've got one of the letters that we send to them, notifying them of the penalties if they keep them and the information is used against you in the future, because you have the right to be private, all right? Think about this. Before you bought the vehicle, and unknowingst to, unbeknownst to you, you then registered it, so there was a time when it wasn't registered as, as property or co-owned property with the state, okay? Now, if you consider yourself a resident, 
Okay, because remember, there was a time when you weren't a resident. You were living there, and they said, in order for you to do these things, to so get a driver's license, which is commercial, okay, for profit or for state use, they asked you to prove that you are a resident. So it's not fraud. It's not fraud at all. They're doing business. You just didn't know that you had other options to operate your life privately. All right? So they asked you to prove that you're a resident, and then you use that to go on and do other things, and you registered your property. But before that, so if you are a resident, meaning you are living in their jurisdiction by use of the zip code, by your own declaration, all right, you then became a, an employee of the state, okay, and then operating your vehicle became a for-profit thing. So if you're not using your vehicle for profit between you, your home and work, that's private. But if you are doing, if you're a police officer, if you are a Uber driver, anything where you're making money on the um, state citizens, public roads, then that has to be paid for and taxed, and so you have to be driving. So CDL people have to keep, and we've done this for thousands of them over the years now, um, they have to keep their license, but they can operate their personal vehicles privately, but not the truck, okay? So, uh, this right here is a uh, instructions for selling a vehicle from the Department of Motor Vehicles for this particular state. All right, so here you're gonna read through and figure out which one of these that fit you, okay? Check it off. You're gonna put the seller's name, which is you, okay? In all capitalized letters on the left, All right, what's that? All right, so you're gonna put that on the left, and here's the big thing about this, is that you are going to put your vehicle in a trust, so you must create a trust first, okay? Call the trust whatever you want, but don't call it by your legal name, because then you're transferring it out and write it back in. So you wanna move your stuff from the public trust into your own private trust. So on the left side, your name in all caps, your license and all the other good stuff. On the right hand side, educational information only. You're gonna to wanna to put uh, your trust name, okay? Any information here as far as your ID, probably uh, I would use like um, your passport number here as identity, your street address, and I personally would not put a zip code, I would put all zeros down, okay? You're gonna sign on the left, you're gonna autograph your full given name on the right, okay? So once you do that, okay, so that's every DMV for every state should have a form, otherwise make and create your own. But if you can actually go to their site and do this process, it's actually way better, okay? Because this is gonna notify their system that your vehicle has now been put into a trust, okay? So this should update all of your records. So, or all well, their records, make a copy for yourself, Keep this in your travel binder, okay? Because if an officer of the law comes by and he's just doing his job, and he's like, well, according to my computer here, it's uh, registered to blah, 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 and I've got your address here and zip code and all that stuff, so you are, in fact, a U.S. citizen. Can't really argue that you're a national, you know, operating privately. So you're going to put in your driver's license or ID number, date of birth, last four of your social, hit next. Um, they're gonna then, it's gonna then pull up your vehicle. Okay, you're gonna click that vehicle or vehicles. Okay, remember this is only for private, natural persons, nationals of the United States, okay? Pulling your vehicle from the public side to the private. So once that's done, you're gonna hit the sale information. The sale information is gonna ask you how much you sold the vehicle for, you can, as long as I think over a dollar or five dollars is considered a legal, legal sale. You're going to do that. Then they're going to say, does all the information look good? Okay, so for ours, it's going to say blah, 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 trust. Okay, not with my exact same name. But in the trust, I'm going to list my, my, myself as the um, grantor and trustee. And then whoever is going to be the beneficiary. All right. So now the trust, which is not a registered entity to the state, owns the vehicle but I control the trust so I get to control the vehicle and when I'm done with it or I get the heavenly then the beneficiary collects it okay 
Then you're going to hit co confirmation or confirm. They are then going to get the information on their side. You're going to get a printout, and you're going to want to keep that in your travel binder. Keep one in your travel binder. Keep one at home. Maybe even make a third copy. There's a backup that you keep somewhere off-site. Once that's done, you have moved your vehicle from the public to the private side. This is one of the mistakes a lot of people have missed, and maybe we didn't emphasize making your vehicle private. But on the side of the road, if you have this with your uh, notify the state with their logos on there, this information should be in the system. This information is now also copied for your paper. And they go, oh, well, let's see your papers. Okay, look at it, you know. Oh, okay, I guess it has been sold. It's got the letterhead from the state on there, blah, blah, blah. This is the most updated information. You're good to go. Now, if you have been doing bogus stuff or whatever else, yeah, they'll still give you a ticket of some sort because just because you're private doesn't mean that you're untouchable, doesn't mean that you're above the law or any of that stuff. Not at all, okay? It just means that if you are operating your vehicle privately and you have not done anything criminal, you will be good. But if you endanger public safety, that is a matter for the courts. And unfortunately, fortunately, they're there to stop you. And that's the thing. So for detailed information on right to travel, um, look up right to travel. Like I said, I've got some information on my site. Otherwise, you can go look up, type in Supreme Court, right to travel. Um, you can pull down Supreme Court cases on right to travel and numerous other freedoms under the Constitution. Remember, there are three constitutions. Your state has one, but it is not the superior one unless you're an employee. Then these, these matter for you as an employee, okay, and a U.S. citizen. The states gave up some of their power to also be under the control of the federal government. Okay, the federal government has theirs. And even Washington, D.C. has their own constitution. So depending on where you're at and which one of those you're loyal to, you have to abide by those. But the superior one to the land is the constitution for the United States of America. All right? Unless it's a private one or you have a private agreement with another state uh, or whatever else. So that's it, guys. That is it. That is it. Thanks for watching the video. Take care of yourselves. Travel safe, smart, and um, make sure you take care of yourselves and each other. Be courteous to the people out there who don't know this information. Um, yeah, people out there are going to earn their stripes. You're going to earn your scars. You're going to earn your whatever. This isn't for everybody. I've gone through it. That's why I know about these things. That's why each step of the way, uh, we've improved the process to figure out where we were going wrong. Okay? So... That is that part. If you want full information, contact your state uh, attorney general. All right. Contact the U.S. Attorney General for the United States of America. Um, contact a constitutional lawyer. Contact uh, somebody in the Supreme Court. Ask them about your rights and freedoms. Like I said. So that's it. I will talk to you guys later. Bad Wolves over and out. Don't forget to hit that bell and subscribe and enjoy your day.